Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the first class of ENG 3E, uh, Term 2A. I'm your instructor, Mike Laberty, and today is February 6th, 2023. So today's our first class, and we're jumping into Unit 1 of this course. So our main task today are going to be to review the course material. So I'm just going to, I'm going to walk you through all of the course material that you should have now. Uh, and then if you don't have any of the course material that I'm talking about, then please reach out to me as soon as you can. And I'll make sure you, you get that material as soon as possible. So I'll, I'll be walking through the, the course material, the things you need to be successful. And then we're going to look at the first four unit assignments. So every unit in this course will have assignments. So we're going to go through those to see um, what's expected of you and just to walk through the question and to make sure there's no confusion over what's being asked of you for that particular assignment. So let's jump right into the course. Uh, actually, no, before we do that, I will tell you a little bit about myself. So I am the instructor for ENG 3E. I'm also the instructor for ENG 4E and OLC 4O. So there's a black and white photograph I, uh, I took of myself. I believe this was this past summer when I had my hair quite short. It's been a while since I had my hair that short, so it's pretty hot. So I decided just to shave it all off, trying to grow it back right now, trying to get it back a little bit longer. So. This is my first year teaching with WASA. Prior to this uh, amazing opportunity, I was a public librarian for about 10 years. So worked, worked in libraries for, for a long time. And then before that, I was a student. And actually last year, I was the librarian at the library at Sacred Heart School and did a bit of supply teaching as well and decided to switch gears and to teach adults. And, and I think WASA is a great school. It's a pretty unique opportunity. It's definitely unlike any other teaching I've done before. So just wanted to say that I, I really do look forward to reading your work. You'll learn a lot about someone when you read their assignments, especially if they're about their life and, you know, uh, the journey they've been on. So I really look forward to, to teaching this term and to learning more about you and in your life. So here's a little bit, a little bit more about me. So I'm from Sioux Lookout, Ontario. I'm born and raised. I lived in Winnipeg and Windsor, but for the most part, my home has been right here in Sioux Lookout. I am married with two boys. So they've, uh, my lovely wife, Natalie and I have two boys who are grade seven and grade four. Usually when I'm not teaching or at home with my family, um, you can, you can find me at the hockey rink playing hockey myself and uh, coaching. Love to play guitar. I love to sing. So I'm, I'm really, really into music and song lyrics. And I'd like to incorporate a bit of that into our, into our classes, into our lessons. So I'd like to hear about your favorite bands and artists and things like that. I love watching The Simpsons. Been one of my favorite TV shows of all time. I love to quote it endlessly. So maybe we'll fit a few Simpsons quotes in the mix as we go along. And I'm interested in psychology, the brain, mental health, things like that. I just love, I love to research about the brain, about how our, how our minds learn, you know, um, what we can do to keep our, our, our mental health kind of strong and, you know, what to do when we're going through rough times and just, yeah, all things about the brain is things that I'm really into. And I think that really comes into, really comes in handy when, when you're a teacher. So it's important to to pay attention to the minds the mindsets and the states of your students so um yeah so that's that's a little bit about me and a little bit a bit a little bit about the journey that I've taken so I, I've had lots of jobs lived in lots of places done uh, had a lot of jobs that I didn't like I've had many many jobs that I've loved so you know, but usually it comes down to, I love working with words, love working with people. I'm definitely an idea person. I love ideas and just seeing them develop 
over the course of time and, and helping other people with their ideas. So that that's the things in life that make me make me really happy and the things that I, I, I try to try to do. So um so that's a little bit about uh, my journey. Now, before we delve into every class, I, I'll give some announcements. So some of them might be shorter than others, but I just want to make sure students are aware of some key key dates, some key times, make, making sure you're on track. So this is the announcements for term 2A. So I know that some people watching this are independent learners, but I'll mention this many times as we go through the course that I believe it's really important that you follow a, a timeline. So the the terms at WASA are divided into nine week segments. So you take one course for nine weeks. Well, you, there's nine weeks of classes, and then there's an admin week, and then during that admin week, or it's it's the it's the week after the nine weeks of classes. That's when you'll write. A final exam or you'll write a culminating course activity so there'll be some big final assignment at the end but you'll do nine weeks of classes and we'll do nine weeks of classes together here so this is week one each class will have each week will have four classes so uh 36 in total so we're on one of 36 so we are just beginning our journey together this is the you know this is the this is the first step on the way there will be no class on Monday, February 20th, because that is the family day holiday. So the office here is closed. It's, uh, I believe it's Louis Riel Day in Manitoba and Saskatchewan. So depending on where people are at, you know, all our students are in Ontario, of course, but that day we're, we'll have no classes. But otherwise, otherwise we will have classes. So I guess, I guess actually we'll have 35 classes in total because we'll miss that Monday. Uh, and then the March break is March 13th to the 16th. There will be no classes during that time. But otherwise, otherwise we are broadcasting Monday through Friday. So here's a little breakdown. Um, sorry, I should say term 2A at the top. But unit one should cover should take about weeks one and two to cover. Um, there are five units in total in ENG 3E. Unit one is going to take us the longest, so it might go into weeks uh, week three, but I'm hoping we can get it done in weeks one and two. So basically, every two weeks we're we're tackling one of these uh, one of these units, and then week seven and eight, hopefully finishing up unit five with enough time for weeks eight and nine, maybe just week nine by the time we're done, but. I'll spend at least one week preparing you for your final exam and going over some key concepts. And then the week after that, so you, the, the, the following admin week, that's, that's when you're going to write your final exam. And if you're an independent learner, you're going to be on your own kind of, uh, your own schedule for writing a final exam. But I, I really do recommend that you try to keep to that nine week schedule. It's, I know if you're anything like me, it's hard to keep yourself motivated. And if you have from now until June, you know, it's, you, you, you're going to be kind of unfocused in how you hand in things. So that's just something to keep in mind. I think if possible, I would try to do one course at a time. If you're an independent learner and, you know, just get it all done, go on to the next one. But if you're if you're juggling two courses, then I get it. You're gonna have to be uh, kind of spaced out. But the important thing is just to be consistent and to and to submit your work whenever you can. So right now we're we're in the midst of moving things around here in the Wasa building. So the studio is still being assembled. So I'm I'm hoping that. Anyone who tried to phone in today or tune in on the radio, if there's any kind of technical glitches today, I apologize in advance for that. And I'm hoping that tomorrow or later this week, we can figure everything out. And, you know, when everything is set up, these are the four ways that you can participate in the class. So you can phone the studio at one of those numbers. You can tune in on the radio, 91.9 FM. 
you can if you have bell express view you can tune in the channel 972 and if you're on zoom you can you know uh type in that that uh did that sorry i'm losing my my train of thought here this this number here right here you can type that code in and then that that code is also found in your course material it's in the study guide and it can also be found out by talking to your DC, talking to your learning center. I'm going to put that on Facebook. So more on that in a second. So there's there's the four ways you can watch the class live, watch or listen to it live. And of course, I will be putting all of my classes onto onto YouTube. So it's usually the day after the day after the class is aired then i'll upload everything to my youtube channel and you'll be able to watch all my videos there so they are organized into playlists so on the screen there you'll see my olc course from last term so term 1b i was teaching olc so anyone who wants to take olc and want some help with the chorus, they can watch all 36 videos and they're organized into playlists. So I'll do the same. So if you, if you look for Laverty Wassa, if you search Laverty Wassa on YouTube, you'll find my channel. And if you just select playlists, you will see an ENG3E playlist. So you just click on that. Or if you search videos, if, if you click on videos, all my videos will come up. All right, so how to submit work. So you're either, you know, you're giving that to your DEC and they're going to scan it and email it or fax it or find some way to get it to me, or you yourself are scanning and emailing it. And when you're doing that, you're sending it to studentwork at nnec.ca. And then you're also CCing me, which means, uh, you know, carbon copy, right? So you need to. You need to send send it to studentwork at nnec.on.ca and then also send it to my email address, which I'll put up on the screen in a second, right? So um, important to make sure that both email addresses get the assignment, okay? You can also fax pages to 1-800-463-7852. And you can take photos with your phone and email or send on Facebook Messenger, right? So there's lots of ways you can get your work to me. One of the one of the apps that I like to use is the Adobe Adobe Scan. So I would recommend you use the Adobe Scan app. It's very useful. It's a it's a free app, and it allows you to take photographs and then turn those photographs into a pdf file which then you can edit or add comments and then send to people right so so if you're doing your work with a pen and a pad right you you then have to find a way to, to send that work in right so i know sometimes the work can be mailed so it's just you know best case scenario is talk to your dc and they can help you out and i am here of course to help you out as well so this is my or sorry these are my my coordinates that's if you want to find me on the internet this is how you're going to do it okay so and any so m laverty at nnecschools.org that's my email address that you can you can email me at you can find me on facebook messenger at laverty wasa so you can add me as a friend You'll get lots of friendly uh, chorus reminders and things like that. If you phone those numbers, 1-807-737-1488, um, extension 2211. And then at, if you get the receptionist, just ask for Mike and they'll patch you through. If you don't get a receptionist, then you'll get the automated menu. And then you can just type in 2211. You'll get my extension. The bottom number there is our free long distance number. So 1-800-667-3703. So phone that number if you don't wanna 
get long distance charges and you can talk talk to me in person my office hours are 9 a.m to 3 p.m and this is central standard time so if you phone the office send me an email shoot me a message on messenger this is when i'm going to be the most responsive i don't really have access to my email and my messenger outside of work hours i try to keep my um try to keep my work and professional or my, my professional and my personal life separate so i don't really check it that often i might see it but you know best case scenario try to get in touch with me and then if you do send me a message or an email at night then i'll get to it first thing in the morning because that's when i'm doing my lesson planning and getting ready for today's class all right so here's your next step so you should contact me through email facebook messenger phone or text and let me know if you still need course material so that's that's my number one concern right now i i, I need to know if my students have their course material and i need to know that they you know they're they're ready to go and they can just start doing their assignments so i need to know you're out there so if you haven't done so just you know contact me you know find a way to reach through to me just say hey uh, i'm taking your chorus i've signed up for it you know at the very least that's just you know step one just reach out let me know you're out there and then after that you know read the eng 3e study guide uh review our two textbooks the road ahead and making it work so these are some things you can do to to get yourself started okay so you know read that study guide and check out the two textbooks and reach out to me so just that's the very first things just get yourself rolling just let me know you've got all, all the things you need and then we can take it from there and I would, i'd love to hear you know how you're doing if you have any questions if you want to send me an assignment that'd be awesome yeah I, I should have mentioned that when, when we were talking about submitting work so I I think it's best to to submit you know like a few assignments at a time you know uh one you know one to five assignments right like especially for your first assignments like just send me a small batch of work don't think that you have to just complete an entire unit and send that to me it's best to just do a little bit even just one assignment and send it my way and then I'll give you some feedback and then let you let you know some things to work on I'll let you know what you're doing well and that's that's the best way to do this right because sometimes you might not read the questions you know as carefully as you should or you might make some assumptions and the best way for this course to work for for me and the best way that it's going to work with you and us working together as a team is for you to just send me like small batches of assignments and then I'll correct them I'll read them and I'll give you some feedback right so that that's a big part of this course is that is that give and take relationship between between the teacher and the student so this is a workplace uh, preparation college, uh, a, a workplace preparation course, right? So it, it's intended to give you communication skills, uh, you know, for the workplace. And it doesn't matter what kind of workplace you end up in. You're always going to have that relationship either with your coworkers or, you know, in this case, you know, uh, a, a supervisor, a manager, a boss of some kind. And you're going to produce work and they're going to give you feedback on it and you have to learn how to take criticism and just know that somebody is trying to they're, they're trying to get the best out of you and that, that's what I'm trying to do I'm trying to get the best work out of you and I know it's a process right so so don't don't expect yourself to to produce perfect things or you know to have everything figured out you know the first couple assignments that's that's exactly what you're doing you're just just getting things figured out and as long as you keep an open mind I guarantee you you're going to get better as the course progresses all right so what I like to do is I like to give students a snapshot 
of, of today's lesson. So I'll, I'll do this for every class. So for today's lesson, we're going to look at an image of the day. So on Mondays, I like to put up an image, you know, something, you know, something funny or something interesting that I've found online that we can just have a quick discussion on. Then we're going to talk about the study guide. Then we're going to review the ENG 3E Unit 1. So we'll just have a look at Unit 1 and what's in there. We're, we're going to discuss our two textbooks. Not go into too much detail, but just talk about them briefly so you're aware of their names and what function they serve and why we have them and what you have to do with them. And we're going to look at assignments for Unit 1. So that's that's our lesson for today. So our learning goals are to review the study guide, unit one, and the two textbooks for ENG3. So we're looking at the documents that we need to be successful in this course. And our learning goal number two is to reflect upon important decisions you have made in the past, right? So that's one aspect of this course is, is reflection. So it's Throughout ENG 3E, you are taught a variety of reading, writing skills, understanding media, oral communication skills, so all kinds of communication skills, but you're also, you're also asked to reflect upon your own life and to, you know, take stock of your life, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago, last week, and to think about where you want to go. Right. So that's that's a big component of this course. So you learn new skills, but you also you also think about your own learning and, and try to take an active role in your learning and just acknowledge that you're really good at some things and other things you need work at. And that's uh, definitely a huge component of, of being successful in any kind of workplace environment. Right. You have to know your skills. You need to know what you're good at, but you have to take stock of where you need to improve and, and you know, what's not working and things like that, right? So we're going we're gonna to do a bit of that today. Our success criteria, you know, we will take notes. So that's you. That's You're going to take notes on important details about the study guide, unit one, and the two textbooks for ENG 3E. And you're going to use your reflections to help answer the first four assignments from unit four. So we'll have a look at those first four assignments and your ability to reflect and think about your own life is, is going to help you to answer, to answer those questions. All right. So moving right along, we've got our images of the day up on the screen there. So. Today's, uh, sorry, like ENG 3E is all about uh, the journey, right? So that's the, that is our chorus in a nutshell. That, that's, the, uh, that's the theme, right? So unit one is preparing for the journey, right? So I just thought I'd put up a, an, an image I found online. I've always been fascinated by animals and the and the incredible migrations that some animals make and you know these these bird species are making you know like unbelievable uh long journeys right so these are the longest annual migration distances recorded for a bird species right so this is how long they travel in one year so that's ninety six thousand kilometers for this arctic turn right so that's you know, that's more, that's, uh, that's more than two trips around the world, right? So circumnavigation, like going from starting where you are, going around the entire world, and then coming back, doing it again, and then plus a little bit more, right? So the circumference of the earth is about 40,000 kilometers. So the short-tailed shearwaters doing about, you know, one trip around the world, right? So yeah, just just a little food for thought. Just something I found really cool. Uh, I love this. Uh, it's a, it's a nice graphic I found from the people at St Statistica. Uh, Statista, sorry. Um, up in the top here, that's this is a sheer water right here. Um, this is the pied weeder right here, and we've got the, I believe that's Ad Adile Adelai. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. It looks very French. Penguin, right? So. 
we see lots of penguins waddling around, but you know, once they get in the water, they are incredibly fast animals and they, and they do make amazing journeys around the world, right? So they're always on the move, right? So in, in this course, we're talking about journeys, but we're not just talking about, you know, physical like journeys from point A to point B. We're talking about your, your journey through time, uh, you know, your, your inner journey, your journey, you know, in your mind, you know, spiritual journeys, you know, so journeys of all kinds, right? So that that's that's the theme, right? And it's there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs. You have to prepare for the journey. You got to be ready for it. So we're using that metaphor in this chorus, right? So the metaphor of the of the journey. So just thought I'd share this uh, amazing amazing journey that these animals can make. It's actually a, a man with some silicone roots named Fred Bodsworth wrote a, a novel called The Last of the Curlews, which is another kind of Arctic bird that makes an incredible journey. Uh, yeah, really cool book. All right, so before I, I go into this too much further. Okay, and we're back. Okay, so I meant to share a different uh, screen, but I think I stopped my recording altogether, but we're, we're back. So on the screen, you'll see we have English Workplace pep Preparation, uh, Grade 11, ENG 3E. So that, that's the course code, right? So threes usually refer to Grade 11 courses. E is stands for the Workplace Preparation, and ENG, of course, stands for English, right? So So it is a full credit course that will give you the opportunity to develop practical written and oral communication skills needed, especially for today's workplace, right? So you'll be developing lots of reading and writing uh, communication skills. So that, that's that's the key component of this course. It, it's teaching you, teaching you how to be a better communicator. So we've gone over this a little bit. I am your teacher, Mike Laverty. Those are my office hours, Central Standard Time, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So we will broadcast Monday through Thursdays. Um, ah, I'm just realizing there's a typo there. I, that, that's, I'm making note of that. So that needs to that needs to be changed. So we're not meeting from 11 a.m. to 11:55. We are, of course, meeting at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. to 1:55. Okay, so that that's that. I'll, I'll change that and and get that out to people. So, so there's my office details right there. You can phone me uh, anytime. Leave me a voicemail. You know, just anytime you want. Just check that out, and I'll be sure to check it first thing I do when I come in the morning. You can fax anytime. You know, definitely important to note that it's not necessary to wait until you have completed an entire unit to send out for marking, right? So please just send me whatever you have. You know, as, as soon as you've got some assignments done, just send those over to me. And that's my email address and uh, Facebook and YouTube. I am on this this same this same uh, name, Laverty, Laverty Wassa. So you should have received the following materials in, ad in addition to the study guides. So you should have units one through five, and you should have two textbooks. So there's the road ahead and there's making it work. So there's two textbooks and there's five unit guides, uh, sorry, five units. So, and then each unit will have questions associated with it. And then there's also questions found in the road ahead and making it work, but more on that in a second. And again, please talk to me as soon as you can. If you don't have that material, just let me know as soon as you can. So your unit assignments are worth 70%. So that's the unit assignments plus the assignments that are found in textbooks. Your final culminating activity from unit five is worth 10%. And your final exam is worth 20%. So 70 plus 10 is 80. 80 plus 20 is your final 
mark of 100%. And that's, so that's how it's broken down. Any questions about that, just feel free to get back to me and I will explain that to you further. But you'll see the unit assignments make up the, the bulk of your course, so you got to stay on top of those. All right, so upon completion of this course, you will have achieved many of the following expectations. You are encouraged to read through this list as presented here before you begin work in Unit 1 and refer back to it uh, as time is needed, right? So we won't have time to go through this today, but this, these are the requirements that you'll be, you'll be looking at in this course. This is, an, this is an important one. So we'll be spending a lot of time talking about reading strategies. We'll talk about how to understand different kinds of texts. And that's what I think is, is one, one of the largest benefits of taking English courses and becoming a stronger reader is you begin to identify certain kinds of writing, know what to expect from them. And, and, and this sort of goes along with like being a musician being someone who likes movies and TV shows, right? Like once you understand the different types and genres, you, you know what to expect and you know what to come, right? Like if you read a bunch of history books or if you read a bunch of romance novels or if you're really into science fiction, you start to get the form and the format and you start to see all the different pieces that come together to make it work, right? So you're gonna become an expert on many different kinds of texts. And then you're going you're gonna to make connections with those texts with your own life. Um, we're we're going to talk about uh, style, right? So, you know, how authors and editors use design to organize content, communicate ideas, right? So we're going to talk about the different ways that we can communicate ideas, um, generating ideas, gathering information. So we'll be doing, you know, a little bit of research skills, gathering information, learning what to do with that information, especially from a workplace related setting. So there's going to be a lot of focus on uh, cover, may, co <laughs> cover letters, resumes. I almost combined the two words there. So, you know, looking at choosing form to suit the purpose of our audience. So that's a huge part of this course too, learning about audiences, learning how to communicate with different people for different purposes. Organizing our ideas and information in written work. So you're gonna learn how to become a better writer. And so you're gonna learn about how to, how to write a sentence, how to understand the different parts of speech, you know, revising, re revising drafts. You're, you're gonna learn how to get your ideas on the page and how to transform your rough ideas into something stronger, right? And so I'm going to spend a lot of time with you going through the writing process, how, how to make you a stronger writer, you know, how, how to work through many drafts. And that's, that's how it's done, right? I think um, sometimes people, when they set out to be writers, they just, they expect everything to be perfect and they don't understand that it really is a process. All right, so we don't have time to go through all of the, all of this, and that that's your job. I want you to go through, I want you to go through this uh, on your own. Read through that study, that read through the study guide. Take some notes on it, okay? I'm going to open up Unit One for us, and just took a brief look at this, so. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Okay. Okay, so everybody should be, you should be looking at uh, unit one. So there's the there's the cover page. So again, it, it is preparing for the journey. That's that's the main theme. You get a chorus overview. So again, I'm asking you to review this in detail. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna focus on a few important parts, right? Uh, 
Again, this is the breakdown of the entire course, not just this unit. More on the textbooks in a second. So if you flip through the textbook, you start to get into these tables, okay? So table one, these are the four selections you need to read from your anthology, the road ahead. So there's four things you need to read in the road ahead. And there they are. Table two are the readings from your handbook. So you, these are the things, I mean, you, you could read that whole textbook. That'd be amazing, but I know everybody's busy. These are the pages for unit one. So you need to read these articles in the handbook, okay? And we'll, and we'll cover those in class a little bit. And then if you go through, you will have, uh, you know, you'll get some tips on how to write a little bit about that. And then you'll get to the assignments for unit one. And you'll see that they are, they're numbered one through 10. Okay. So there, there's, there's these 10 unit assignments that you need to do to, to get through this, to get through this unit. Okay. And so you can write those in a, in a Word document. You can write them on a separate piece of paper. It's up to you how you want to organize that. But when it comes to submitting your work, just make sure that it's nice and clear to me, you know, you know, write down assignments for unit one, number one, you know, or write down textbook assignments, making it work, page 23, you know, just be as specific as possible so I know which assignment you're handing in, okay? There's not enough room to do it on the page here, so you have to do things on a separate piece of paper. Table three are the textbook assignments. So making your work on the left-hand side of the page, the road ahead is on the right-hand side of the page. You'll see the page number and how much it's worth, okay? So if you flip to page 13, you'll see an assignment called do it yourself. You'll write that out again on a separate piece of paper or on a separate Word document. Just let me know which textbook you're working with the name of the activity and the page it's on. So try your best to give me that information so I know I know what what you're um what you're working on. And then you'll do a culminating activity worth 50 marks. So these are a large assignment at the end of the unit that sort of consolidates and combines all of the skills you've learned to date and you'll do something a bit longer, okay? So this is going to be uh, a short essay you're going to write, okay? It's going to be like a short, a short biography of your life. And you can include some of these topics. So more on this later, but that's, that's the big assignment at the end. Keeping in mind that you have to do a, a title page, uh, a rough copy, and a computer printout or a final copy, right? So you need to share rough work and then you have to show me how you've revised that rough work into something even stronger. Okay. And we can get back into our back into our lesson here. We got another 15 minutes to go here. Okay. Ah, there we go. Okay. All right. Let's view that. Look ahead to where we were. All right. So just a little recap there. So you do have 10 assignments worth 52 marks in total from the unit, right? So that's unit assignments one through 10, and they're worth a total of 52 marks. So you find that in the unit. You have textbook assignments, you have 18 in total. They're worth 100 marks. So that's making it work and the road ahead. So there's the two textbooks and you'll find 18 assignments in total. And then you'll have to do a culminating activity which I think I wrote down 80 marks. 
but I believe I was confusing that with a, a different unit or a different course altogether. So I'm just double checking my figures here. Yes, that should read 50 marks. The, your culminating activity is worth 50 marks, but it's the biggest assignment you do. And I, I, I recommend you don't do that until your other assignments are completed. And I won't, I won't discuss it until we've gotten through those other assignments. So as I mentioned, you, you do have these two, these two textbooks to work through. So the road ahead, reading selections for Canadian students, that is what we call an anthology. So it's, it's, a, it's a collection of poems, short stories, uh, bits from novels, magazine articles. So it's, and, and that's what an anthology is. It's, it's a whole bunch of different kinds of writing, sort of like the Bible, right? Like it's just many different kinds of writings combined into one book. So that's, that's your anthology, The Road Ahead. The other book is Making It Work, which is technically, they're both textbooks, but one's an anthology and Making It Work is a handbook. It's specifically a handbook for reading, writing, language, and media, right? So this textbook is, is giving you specific instructions and, and, and tips and guidelines and strategies, you know, to make you a better reader, a better writer, uh, someone who can understand language, someone who can pick apart media, take it apart, analyze it, you know, critique it, right? So that's the purpose of that textbook, right? So those two textbooks in combination is uh is that's most of the reading you do in this course will be coming out of these two textbooks so the road ahead has four reading selections as we mentioned we've got a poem the road ahead sorry the road not taken by robert frost we have a play teach me the ways of the secret Teach me the ways of the sacred circle. I see I spelled circle wrong there. I'm finding some spelling mistakes. That should be S-C-I-R-C-L-E, circle, by Valerie Duoward. We have a newspaper article, Why Idelicos as Canadian as Maple Syrup, by Daniel Brazio, and a magazine article, Lost and Found, by Daniel Harder, right? So you have four things to read for Unit 1 from the Road Ahead textbook. Making it work. You have some reading selections. They're on the screen there. So we'll we'll talk about some of these in class. I'll, I'll summarize some of the key concepts, but it's your responsibility to to read these uh, reading selections. And they will help you one hundred percent with answering your assignments, okay? and and writing the final exam. So please take the time to go over that. There's a section on grammar which is pages 190 to 228. So that's a really important part. So we're going to spend a lot of time on grammar in this course through my, through my lectures, through my presentations, but I want you to take the time to look at that and go over it. So yeah, so all of those selections, that's so it's your responsibility to read them. And, you know, you can take some notes on them. At, uh, if you have any questions, you can, you can bring those to me, but they will help you to understand the assignments. All right, so jumping right in to the course assignments. The first one is to list five decisions that you have made in the past year worth five marks. And which one of your decisions has been the most important to you and why? So. I want, I want to take this time to, to discuss with you, you know, there, there are times, there are, there are times in this course when you can write in, in point form, it's always best to write in, in, in full sentences, right? So whenever possible, this, this is a, a writing chorus. It's not just writing, but it, you know, that's a, that's one of the big pillars of it. So if you can write in full sentences, write in full sentences, right? So all you have to do, and again, there, there there's no right or wrong answer here. All you're doing is is listing five decisions that you have made 
in the past year you know and, you, and you, these don't have to be like the most personal details from your life they can just be five decisions you made so you might you might want to list like a really huge decision um this can be funny you can you know you can you can decide what kind of sub you had at subway i don't care one it just you know just have fun with it you know give give me a major life decision give me one that was kind of minor but you still had to make it so you know it's a cliche but it's, it's very true that you know life is about making decisions right we're, we're constantly making decisions and our lives are going off in the different paths depending on which which decisions we make right so you know list those five decisions and that's all you're doing is just simply listing five of them and then then you're done Okay, question number two, which one of your decisions has been the most important to you and why? All right, so three marks. So you have to clearly identify which decision you're talking about and then explain why it was the most important, okay? So decide which of those decisions you think is the most important and then, you know, explain why. It, it was it, it was the most important so that so you're not you're not just explaining why it's important you're explaining why it's the most important decision that you made and then we're looking at question three what is a journey give an example two sentences and number four why do you think is it important to be prepared for any journey you decide to make one or two sentences all right so so the, these are the first uh, questions in the course, and it, it, it's a, and it's good practice, right? So I encourage you to write in full sentences and to, you know, express yourself as fully as you can, include lots of details. You know, I, I never dock somebody marks for putting in too few details, but I definitely don't give full marks when someone is not giving full information, right? So... Okay, my smart board's not working here, so I'm going to try a different strategy. So that, that first question is listing five decisions. So I'll just, I'll walk you through how I would do this. Okay. Pull up my Word document here. All right, so I've got my Word document up. Okay. So the first question is, you know, list five decisions you have made in the past year so what i would do is I, I i would just start jotting down um you know decided to put my son in karate instead of hockey so that i mean that was a, we made that decision decision for him but he's only nine right so um oh i took a new job with wasa distance education center um uh, started a new workout program in november 2022 uh i i started uh, i guess i became the head coach for my son's u13 hockey program and Let's see, I, let's see, I bought an apple fritter at Tim Hortons. <laughs> so, yeah. And I think the most important, some of you probably guessed, was um, 
So I, I would, I would, you know, these, these, these can be point form, but I'll say, but it's always best to write in full sentences, right? So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy and paste this one right here. I'm just gonna put that in, in brackets so I rem remember. Um, and this is question two. And I'm gonna say, and then I'm gonna rephrase this. So I'm gonna say, taking a new job as an English teacher was the most important decision I made in 2000, in, in the past year. So my strategy there is just simply, you know, um, so you, you restate the question as your answer. So the question is, which one of your decisions has been the most important to you and why? I restated that to say, taking a new job as an English teacher was the most important decision I made in the past year. Um, and then here's the why. This decision um, changed my life by dot, 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 right? So, and then, then I got, I got to finish that. I got to finish that thought. Okay. Okay. Question three. Uh, what is a journey? Give an example. Okay. And question four is, why do you think it is important to be prepared for any journey you decide to make? Okay. So I'm just looking at the time here that this, this has gone by a little bit faster than I, I was hoping, but you know, tomorrow we'll, we'll come back and we'll, we'll finish this off completely, but we'll, we'll, we'll do the rough version right now. So, um, so for this, what is a journey? I, 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 I you know, you can look up a dictionary definition and then put it in your own words that's you know it's hard to define journey without actually just copying something but you know you can look up a dictionary definition um or another definition you find online and then put it in your own words and then the examples you provide you know can be from your own life or from you know stories you've heard about right so um you know think about the the different kinds of journeys right so we've got um fictional journeys real ones inner journeys physical journeys spiritual journeys right so there's there's so many kinds, right? I would say, you know, there's animals, there's, uh, I don't know. So many ways you can approach that question, right? And, and why do you think it's important to be prepared for any journey you decide to make? Um, so maybe with this one, we'll, you know, you could you know, start with rough point form and then and then create full sentences. Okay, that's a good point to end on today. So we'll maybe tomorrow we'll, we'll pick up on this and we'll talk about the art of um, the art of you know starting with rough point form ideas and then pushing that into fully fledged you know like sentences. Okay, so that's that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. We will meet again tomorrow afternoon.